by far. That's better. You're, you're informing uh, your people where they, that you're heading up out of the grade. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have it here. I'm going to put uh, 45 days. What, what does it say about or have a look at where you think would be the best place to try to find it? Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm going to take 15 days yep. and put it into protection versus negation on my draw ring. Okay, so we're, um, and are these the first days on here? Yes. Okay, so 15 days towards a ruin, protection versus negation. For, no, towards permanence. Oh, uh, no, oh, oh, so you need a little like Permanent for 25%. 25%. Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're working towards 90 days. That's what you want to hit. Okay. Okay, so the days, the 15 days have gone into that. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else that you need during these 30 days? Yes, I have six enchant item scrolls. Yeah. I am going to read all six of them yeah. onto the ship shield okay. to make it stronger. Okay. See, and that's another reason that the maneuver put on maneuverability was better because you've already got basically you're, you're putting on armor. What you're doing, yeah. magically. Okay. So, uh, so read the scroll six times and cross them off. Do, uh, are you dividing it evenly amongst all the three facets of the shield's power, such as its how fast it rejuvenates, its overall hit points, and how long it stays on? I'm going to do uh, three scrolls on its hit points and three scrolls on its uh, rejuvenation. Okay. Sounds good. Do we have anybody that can find plants? I can, sort of. Not the greatest at it, but I can. Well, I got like I got thirty percent to find plants. These are forty-five percent. Thirty percent. Yeah, because you're a warlock. Yeah. Say that again. Uh, these are forty-five day scrolls. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so 45, 45, 45. Now, Phila S. Smithy Magisha Craft, 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 and Phila S. Smithy Magisha Craft. There, six times. Okay. Enchanted power is getting poured into the ship, into its ability to shield. Everybody keep in mind, because you could be commanding it. When you're at the wheel, you push the if wheel. you push the wheel forward, It'll slide in, and that puts the shield up. Yeah. The magical we'll shield will surround the ship at 100 feet. If they're within 100 feet, it's too late. They're inside the shield, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. But if there's some, it might still be worthwhile because there might still be some outside the shield. So right. get it up as quickly as you can. If you see trouble, it'll last for like a few hours is the amount of time that this shield will be able to be up at any given time. Is it something that we, have to be, uh, we should be conservative with? Like, does it have a certain number of charges, for example? Or Yes. It, no, uh, it, it regenerates very slowly. Time is what it takes. To okay. <clears throat> I have a 19% chance of finding healing plants. Okay. That's not bad. That says we'll find one every five days. Yeah. So that's, that's what that's telling me. That's good odds. If we do the, as, long as, they don't get killed, as long as they don't get killed in those five days, it'll be good. Yeah, exactly. Do you guys want the description of this bitter morn? Uh, I we generally know what it is. We know it grows in the winter time. I believe. Yeah. yeah so locale is tundra. Season is winter. Difficulty is five percent. Yeah. Um, it's a rare colorless lichen that grows on rocks beneath year-round ice. When crushed and strained, it creates a clear gel at freezing temperature that melts into liquid when warmer. And the effects are is that imbibing a pint slows, slow, slows the aging process and grants a lifespan of twice normal length. Right. Um, now, my knowledge to what I do know about it, to where to locate, I mean, it's, you could probably go anywhere on the continent, but I think from what stories I've heard from my father and my uncle, they were up in this 
Niagara Falls region, which is probably the coldest region on possibly the earth. <laughs> it's just because of the area it is and the way the winds blow through and stuff, but from what I understand, that's where the highest, you have the best odds of locating this herd, which would be about a uh, 2,000 mile journey from where we are right now, which is roughly three days by uh, okay. ship travel. Changes to the, to the ship shield as a result of your enchantments yes. are as follows. Coming in your head. So getting to the region should be fairly fairly uh, quick. I'm ready. Okay. So Shield has okay. 233 hull points. Uh, or we'll shield. probably be looking at frost okay. giants in the area because the frost giant fortress is up in that region Regenerate too. Regenerate so. three per day. Right. Those are the changes. All right. That's your shield as it exists now. And my, my dealing with frost giants, Zildjian, draw yeah. your bow, fire to kill. Okay. Talk, don't ask no questions. Shoot to kill. Okay. Okay, Zildjian, you have one month to pass here uh, in Skiff Stelland. Uh, you, uh, you guys are staying um, at... Agwundar's uh, home known as the Ice Hearth um, at the base of the mountains for the next month. Uh, you need to put 30 days onto your Norse language. Yeah, so that takes me to 59, Robert, and I checked the um, the training room for the language abilities, and to get from uh, 2 to 3 is 1 month. Yeah. So I would be going up from, I don't know if my writing skill would go up there, or no, just my language. No, so your Norse goes to 3 slash 0. Okay. And uh, and fifty nine and you have and you have twenty nine days left, right? Yeah. Okay. So that goes up there. Uh, you're presently not wounded, so you'll have fifteen focus days. Where do you want them to go? Okay. I just have a quick question before I begin that. Um, the first one is uh, there's this potion called Nature's Power. Yeah. The description is that it increases nature oriented abilities by five percent for days per level. More than one ointment can be applied. Does nature oriented abilities uh, encapsulate things like finding plants? Yeah. Oh, well, good potion. That'd be a good one. The only thing is that the modifier is minus twenty five. I've never made one, and my base percentage is forty, so I only have a fifteen percent chance of making it. Hmm. How many days? Uh, it's three days. Well, you got fifty. I mean, you got to weigh your options, but well, exactly. Like my base percentage to finding plants is nineteen. You know, it'll take me to twenty-four if I make one, basically. Right. And is that time better served making a, a different potion than might might very well be? Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, that clarifies that. Maybe I'll just start with uh, what I need to make. Okay. What do you want to make? Okay, I'll make. Uh, I'll start off with a blink. Okay. How much does it cost? Three thousand. Okay. Takes three days. Okay. Modifiers minus ten. Okay. So my base percentage is forty, so that takes me to thirty, and then I've made sixteen, so I've got a forty-six percent chance. Okay. Let me just double check that number. Hold on. Yeah, 46. Okay. Here's my roll. 64. I missed it. Okay. What are you going to do now? Let me just adjust this value here. The next one I'm going to do is um, an invulnerability. 4,000 it costs. Four thousand, okay, yeah. Four days. Yeah. And the modifier is minus fifteen. So forty minus fifteen is twenty-five. And then I've made twelve. So that takes me to thirty-seven. Okay. Thirty-one, yeah, got it. Okay, so we're adding on a potion of what? Invulnerability. Okay. I presently have zero. And put in brackets how many rounds of invisibility that will give you. Okay. That will give me 
Uh, one round per level. I'm a seventh level alchemist, so seven rounds. Okay. What do you want to do next? Uh, the next one I'm going to do is um, Potion of Spiritual Resistance. Okay. Uh, Cost 5,000. 325,457, yep. So it costs 5,000, takes five days to make. Okay, three days left. Yeah, and the modifier is zero. I haven't made any, so it's going to be basically my base percentage is 40. Okay. 6%. Nice. Okay, so one potion of spirit resistance? Spiritual resistance. Is it a potion? Is it a perfume? What is it? Um... I believe it's in the alchem alchemical recipes. I believe it's a potion. Yeah. Does it just it just says potion or a brew or something? It just says spiritual resistance. Yeah, and the, des the description says the imbiber is so in yeah. I'm imbibing imbiber. it. So it is a potion. Yeah. Imbiber means you drink. It. Yeah. So the imbiber is protected versus spiritual effects in brackets prayers for hours per level. Nice. That's a good one. That is a very good. One. Yeah. Hours per level. <laughs> Seven That's hours. Okay, so I've got uh, three days left. Yep. Okay, I'm going to make a word of recall potion. Okay. How much does it cost? 2,000. 2,000, okay. Takes three, three days. Four, five, seven. It, it takes how, how many days? Three days. Okay. Modifier zero. I haven't made... Oh, actually, actually you know what? I've made one. Let me just double check that. Hold on. Yeah, I've made one, so that takes me to 41%. Okay. Now I'm uh, putting the earth uh, that was uh, I collected from the cold room. Okay. So basically this is going to be a uh, word of recall back to the ship. Okay, so so far what have you tried to make? You tried to make a word of recall. You tried to make a blink. Yeah. Uh, I successfully uh, made a invulnerability, and I successfully made a spiritual resistance. Yeah, spiritual resistance was one, uh, and that was the first one of those that you made. What else did you try? So I tried a blink, failed, got an invulnerability. Yeah. Um, spiritual resistance, and now I'm doing word of recall. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Here's my roll. Yeah. 27, I got it. Okay, so that's word of recall to where? This is back to the ship. Okay. So I'll just put in brackets in my potions that it's to the Rascalion. Yeah. Okay, you have spent the 30 days. Seems like it. Can you let me know what um, how much I spent there? Very good. Very good man. Your money is now uh, <laughs> recruited well. 323,457. Sorry, 323,457? Yeah. Okay. Okay, it is October the 7th. When you, uh, the ship's looking good. Okay, it so the looks ship, mighty fine. Okay, they will. Uh, so you'll be warned about the usual perils of the Great Glacier. One yes. of the big ones, of course, that people mainly talk about is ferry ice. Right. So be very careful about a about ferry ice. If you're traveling, I will get some snowshoes. Okay, just hold on. Just hold on. If you're traveling on ferry ice, what they what they what they have found is that one way, the best way to avoid ferry ice is to travel across it on dog sleds because apparently dogs um, have a special ability so they they can detect fairy eggs. So they've got a sense where, where we just see white and you, uh, you uh, can't tell. They see it differently and they know where the fairy eggs is. Okay. So well, keep in mind that dogs, so that's why they well, find dog that uh, the illusions use dog sleds if they have to travel in areas where there's known to be fairy eggs. Would a polar so bear work on? Well, they have no. They, how, they how, how, how the hell did these guys answer that question? I don't know. Why wow, you gonna ride a fucking polar bear? Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so keep in mind. Did you, did you hear that? Yes. There's a thing called fairy ice out there. It will look like ice. It will look like snow. You won't, so you'll like see it. Run, it it will come the glare it will make it look like what? Like quicksand. Yeah. But it's very much like quicksand. And with the water and the heaviness, once you're in it, you're not getting out. It's just going to take you right down into it, but but uh, but if you're traveling, dog dogs have an ability to 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 detect this stuff. So that's why the uh, Lucians travel on dog sleds in areas where there's fairies. Well, 
that's got a team of team uh, dog sleds in it. What is it that you have around here, like uh, almost wolf type uh, canines for sale? Well, they'd be. You can ownership if you wish. You can, you can transport obviously dog sleds on you. Right. Well, okay. What are we? There's uh, there's obviously three of us right now. But so. uh, but what's in what's in your cargo? Nothing. Nothing okay, right so now. That's perfect. Okay. So yeah. So you you would keep the dogs. In the cargo hold, I mean, obviously yeah. they're they are going to be kept and fed in the cargo. Yes. Yeah. But you would keep them we'll, in we'll uh, get, the cargo hold. We'll get what three dog sled teams? Three teams. That's well, how many? How many? That means if other people join you, they're fine. Oh right. So how many total do we need there? Well, how many? Oh, are hold on. You can carry more than one person per team. Well, that's what I was going to say. Most, most of the dog, dog sleds, sleds are one man operations. Yeah. yeah. Like they are. Yeah. 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 Okay. For the most part, it's say one man. How much of a how much of uh, how much dog sledding do you think you were going to be doing out there? Well, we can sell them back when we're done. Well, you don't have to take them. I, I'm just saying, if you're to say, let's just we, take one. But we're going to have to get out on the ground and look through the day. So yeah, what I'm saying take, is, to do a loop with the dog. Yeah, we'll if you're if you're out looking for herbs, yeah, the dog sleds are the way to travel. Also, if you're going to Shackax Pit, and you have well, to travel anywhere on Shackax nice Pit, there. right? So the dogs are to find that's where they may be right. the most fruitful. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's get. Uh, so how much is a dog sled team? Well, how many total are there of you? Right. We might as well buy. I don't think a dog sled team can be that expensive, can it? Watch uh -huh. you. <laughs> Ten grand. <laughs> <laughs> There's okay. You, me, Zildjian, Galvar, Harisa, Deval. There's six of us. Mm -hmm. So we need six. Six. I teams. have. I have a stone horse. Your stone horse will sink like a stone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, but that's something that can pull a. But you can uh, maybe pull. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it won't protect the ferries. I mean, no. that's really why we're getting the dogs. It's well, we get a that. team of dogs. We get one sled to be pulled by the horse, which always follows the team of dogs. Why the hell? Why do you need this horse? Because we can go make do with uh, eight fewer dogs then. Oh my god! All for that reason, you're gonna risk a stone horse or crazy. Like I have a polar bear chariot as well. Okay. That can probably that'll do. I mean, so you look, if you're uh, gonna do that. that, that's probably what you're looking at. Yeah. So How much is six, six of those? Six dogs. Yes. You know, one man. How many of these can we get on the ship? You're fine with that. That's okay. Yeah. It's not that much space. Okay. So six sleds because you went your so entire cargo. Six dogs. So, and and the way to remember it is they can carry four hundred and fifty or sorry, four hundred thousand cargo pieces. Unless these things cost over four. And if they do, we're not buying them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we can sell them somewhere else at a profit, but I don't. Okay, okay. So you want six dogs six. times six. So you want thirty six dogs. Yeah. Probably one extra thing in case they die. So let's say yes. so let's say forty dogs. Yeah. Okay, forty dogs and six six sleds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you so go go to the ship, and you're going to be keeping this in your cargo hold. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, go to cargo hold. Forty dogs and six sleds. Take out anything else that you may need on this journey because you only have what's on that ship. Uh. Should we take some extra furs and torches? Extra furs would be good, just on the off chance. You it's never know what could happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming we'll be sleeping on the ship at night. As far as that goes. Mm -hmm. But there's still a good chance of being awfully cold through the day, unless we have we we have some items. And Stuff that we bought that helped with the cold, right? Zildjian, you bought some. Yeah, I've got that Palma El Dial. Right. It keeps you warm one day. Your sound isn't good. Check your defaults. Check your default settings. Uh, no, your sound is bad. And for God's sake, just go out and buy a headset. Okay, total cost for your for your dog sleds, mm -hmm. and you'll have the value there too. But it, it'll be forty six thousand. Is this money coming off the uh, three of you? 
Yeah, let's put yeah. her up. Everybody okay. can afford that, I think. Yes, okay. I can. Everybody, everybody yeah. take off of your money 15,333. 15,333. You're at 308124. Yeah. Okay, so the dog sleds have been loaded into the cargo hold. You're saying that you want furs for wearing, like like you're talking about fur, fur robes? Yeah. How many fur robes do you wish? Six. Six fur robes? Six of us. I mean, I don't know if we're going to use them, but buy, it's good well, to buy a dozen of them. Okay. Twelve fur robes? Yeah. yeah. Okay, add to the cargo hold, uh, Aratenzar. Twelve fur robes. Torches would be good. Hold on. Everybody take off 4,000 pieces of copper for the robes. 4,000 pieces of copper. You're at 304, 124. 4,000 pieces of copper. All three of you have taken it off. Yep. Yeah. The robes have now been loaded onto the ship. Food and water? Uh, yeah, we should probably that's, take yeah, that's standard. extra. Let's yeah. assume that you have food and water. Okay. 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 Any, uh, any other equipment? Torches. Okay. Yes. okay. How many torches do you want? 100 torches. 100 torches? Yeah. Okay, 100 torches. That's a good call, actually, because we're all going to scramble for light at some point or another. Yeah. And if they're just on the ship, then we can, you know, a uh, rope, unless that's assumed. Okay, uh, Eric, Tenzer, just take 500 off your money for the torches. Okay, the torches are worth 500 copper. A uh, rope would be a good thing to have. I don't How have many feet of rope do you want? Keep in mind that the that the ship's full of different ropes. Well, I would say we might need 100 feet of rope. Okay, because there'd be places where we have to maybe pass across. Right? Feet. We got dog sleds and we got we can pack all that stuff on when we head out through the day. When we're out on foot, what about those snowshoes you had you had mentioned? Add 500 feet of rope, air tensor, and yeah. take off take off 2,500 pieces of copper. Oh. If you hold on, we'll divide that by three. Yeah. Everybody take off 833 copper for the rope. 833 copper for the rope. Three oh three two nine one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You need to any any other equipment that you want on the in your cargo hold. What about those snowshoes? Snowshoes. You want snowshoes? How many pairs of uh, snowshoes? Dozen pairs of snowshoes. Twelve pairs of snowshoes. There are tens. Are take six hundred copper straight off your money and mark on the snowshoes. Six hundred copper. I got this. I'll get it. Here. Okay, yeah. right. okay. has got the six hundred copper. Okay. okay. Any other equipment that you want in the cargo? Um, maybe some uh, ice picks, like if you were to, like if you had to climb up the side of something, yeah. if you come down a, a crevice or something and had to climb up. Yeah, so for sure. That you could drive into the so do you ice want, and climb do you up want, if need be. Mountain you climbing want, yeah. gear, basically. Right. So you want you want how many sets of mountain climbing gear? Uh, twelve. Twelve okay. doesn't seem okay. like a good Add number. Add on twelve sets of mountain climbing gear. How much is that? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, going to cost twelve hundred copper. I got it. Okay, Agmunder takes off 1,200 copper. I think we are better equipped right now than the party of the pendant has ever been going out into these conditions. Yep. It's, prob <laughs> it's probably because we're, there's so few of us to, uh, to plan it out, really. Yeah. All right. I think we're ready to hit the road, aren't we, boys? I think so, too. Oh, what about the, um, I, I remember something somebody said about vision, like we needed some special vision, otherwise we go snow blind. Snow blinding, snow blind goggles? There are goggles, there are actual goggles that actually put on and they just have a slit yeah. in yes. them, and they do help with the, 
with the uh, yeah, piece of cloth snow blinds out here. Yeah. So if so, so if you want on your ordinary items, because you just make that with a with a. But I mean, the reality blind. is, we're probably not going to be affected too greatly with the snow blindness because we're going to be going up to our ship every night into our cabins. You know, okay. like ideally, yes. yes. Ideally, we're not spending too but much time. But it's better to be safe than sore. Yes, yeah, so just in that case. Would be a, that would be a, that would be an ice blind mask that you put under your items. Okay, I'm gonna add one of those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. We're set to go. The ship is loaded. It's all marked on there. What yeah. you have in the ship. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is your plan? Uh, well, from information that I have, I mean, Jack X Pit is up here, and it's a four-day, four to five-day sail. Um, from what I understand, this is probably. I don't know exactly where the, those guys got it from, but just from what I know, this region through here is your probably best region for Bittermore. Has, is there any information from the her book on Bittermore? Any clues as to where it might grow? Well, he, Zildjian, you read about the... Just reread the Bittermore again, Zildjian. Okay, one sec. Let me just pull it up here. And it grows on plains. Uh, it's tundra. Tundra, which is this whole thing is a tundra. Winter. Um, it only grows in the winter. Winter time. Yeah. That's kind of important. Yeah. Well, it is October. Yeah, okay. So keep that in mind. Hold on. Is that winter up here though? No. So no. Oh shit! Thing. Yeah. October, November, December, January, February, March, April. It's the equivalent of April up here. So good time to be moving into the region as far as weather goes. Well, it's not quite but not a good summer. time to be not a good time to find Bittermore. Which means we're not gonna find it. Which means you have, yeah, the difficulty of five percent becomes zero percent. Okay, well yes, maybe yeah. we're hanging around here for six months. Okay, let's wait. Six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at home, I gotta work anyway. Well, let's head up to Shack X pit anyway. Okay. It's yes. not that far in the big scope of Just to have a just look come. see. Yeah. And then could we could could we after sail across to Mount Morwickick so I could talk to my lady and just the lady of the snow mist. Lady of the snow mist. Are we going to go see the lady of the snow mist? We could go see the lady of the snow mist. Yes. All right. Because I would like to pass some information on to her. I, I don't like know if she knows. She probably well. does know. But uh, uh, there's some information what's going on in our in our lands that is pertinent to okay. information she should know. What would she make of me? How would she react to me? I think she would react fine as long as you show the proper respect to her. I, I don't see her having any issues with All you. Right. All right. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't see any issues. So like we could sail up there, yep. Mount Morwick, uh, and then uh, we could sail there and then across towards Shack X Pit. I don't think it would be any further journey, maybe a day or two sailing extra, but yeah. not a lot. We the ship is faster now. It is fast. That is right. Yeah. It is faster. So okay. So okay. on October the seventh, we're setting sail. You are sailing from Skipstone to where? Mount More Wicked. We should we go straight to? Mount More Wicked. Okay, yes. that's where we're going. And then we'll cut across to. So your first, your first destination. Are you in agreement, Siljan? So you yeah, think your first destination is to go and talk to the lady? Yes. Yeah, we're going to go see yeah. the lady of the snow mist. Maybe she has some insight about uh, about Shack X Pit too. Uh, she won't be that one. I'm not. I don't yeah. ask her with trivial things like that because okay. that's just money digging for us, treasure hunting for okay. us. Okay. All right. And that's she. I get. I get slapped down for okay. questions <laughs> like that. Yeah, you you get slapped down a lot from the women that yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. so you are setting sail. Yeah. Um, what do we want to know about Shakax Pit? Are uh, there any any questions that we have? Uh, I mean, I generally know what it is. It's an ancient. It's a burial ground where white dragons go to die. Didn't you pick up some sort of senium for? That was dragon? not. Yeah, I do have a senium for a, a, a mistress. Okay, just wanted to be sure. She that sails around. She swims around. 
Stellant. <laughs> That's why another reason I got that magic item I got in the <coughs> I can breathe underwater and see underwater now. Very mm -hmm. imperative if you're dealing with a sea nymph. Indeed. And I'm going to you actually I got a seal of fertility. <laughs> Some merman floating around soon. Like I was just going to say, I can make a potion of um, elixir of dream vision, but I've got a 10% chance of making it. Yeah, I wouldn't. What is it, though, Zildjian? Elixir of what? Elixir of dream vision. So the potion places me into a dream that will last through its night's sleep. The imbiber will remember the full extent of the dream in the morning. The imbiber is able to dream about whatever he or she wishes, and the potion will produce visions about that subject. That might, at some point down, for looking for something, that may come in very handy, actually. Yeah, and I also can make potions of uh, treasure finding, too, so that might help for this mission, but also other future ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you head off into the early, uh, actually not even spring yet, it's actually October, November, December, January, February, March, April, it's equivalent of April the 7th, which makes it what season? That would make it spring. Spring, yep, it is, it is uh, early, early spring uh, when you are striking out of skift. Just missed the season we were looking for. Yeah, we did too. Actually, right. in last right. month, all we that, 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 <laughs> that month off cost us that finally. Because it's a chance. But yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah, because on September 7th, that would have been the end of September. That would have been March, March which would have still been winter. Still winter. That's true. All right. Okay, up the ship goes into the air, flying from Stelland. Your path here is going to take you, first of all, uh, northwest. And you're going to cross the island of Stelland over a small channel and into the white whale tribe of, of the Albornians. And you'll be moving through coastal land held by, held by Norse people en route towards the Great Glacier, which basically sits on the center of this continent. A great, the, uh, that's where the Great Glacier sits. Rolling encounter or weather. Okay, you will sail for your first day, crossing 720 miles, meaning on uh, this map, you have crossed 7.2 centimeters. On the route from Mount Morwick, it breaks out. You're crossing that. 7.2, yeah, you're, you're basically... Yeah, exactly. Over the water. Right yeah, now. you spend this full day going over top of, uh, of a Stelland, and you're... And so, by the end of the day, by the at 7.2, have you crossed the the uh, strait yet, or are you still on the We'd still be 7.2, we're yeah. just getting to the edge of this coast. You're right on the coast, okay? So okay, 24 hours later, you move into your next day journey. Only three of you driving the boat, meaning one of you is on, one of you is driving the boat um, at all times. So you're constantly going in cycles and sleeping in between. Um, as you move further north, you can feel the climate changing. It is becoming colder as we travel. So you've, so you've sailed for the entire day on the 7th of, of October. Okay, it is now the 8th of October. I will roll Storm and Encounter. You have an encounter on the eight on the during the eighth of October. Just hold this up just for one second. We'll pull it out. Again. Okay. 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 What height do you wish to fly at? The standard 2,000 feet. You are finding that in the cold, um, the you you do go high. The climate control is making it warm on the on the ship, but the temperature you you are unnecessarily increasing the temperature on the extremity. Uh, uh, about your ship, 
which could cause damage. Okay. So, 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 do? so, so do you have to fly at, at, at 2,000 feet? Yeah, that I don't think that we do, height do we? is going to increase the wear and tear on the ship. Okay. Um, we don't have to fly that high. Is it warmer further down? Yes. Okay. Then we will stay. Lower than 100 feet. Out of range, if, if like a frost giant comes along, you can throw yeah. a boulder at it. Okay. Like a couple hundred feet. Down, you can yeah, 200 feet that. then. 200 feet? Yeah. yeah. Okay, your, your elevation is 200 feet. We're going, we're going to wait. I'm going to grab a drink. I'll be back in two seconds. Yep. Two hundred feet. So you're going to have a good view of the ground. Watch all the reindeer running around. <laughs> be a beautiful trip, actually. The encounter occurs seven hours into your journey, into your day, meaning At the 1,140 mark, go and open your, your map and use the ruler, 1,140. Yeah, at, at, uh, at the point of 11.4 centimeters on your, on your, along your trajectory. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Huh. Okay. Can you see approximately where yeah, you are? I can. What do you see when you when you look down? Uh, I would see what would be I would consider a frozen lake, maybe a long lake that would run according to this, uh, five hundred mile long by where you are? We should be right about here. Yeah. Right in there. So with mountains off just to our south or north of us, there'd be a mountain range starting. Uh, it'd be fairly open and barren here until we come across where this what I call a and it would be quite a big it's five hundred miles long. If it's a lake, I mean it's a frozen. The route we're taking, you would be ready here. Okay. Move the map off. I'm just going to be pretty forward to that piece of okay. the story in that room. As you fly over 200 feet, this is during the day, it is around maybe. An hour after after high noon, it is clear, the sun is shining, skies are blue, it is very, very bright. You can see snow uh, covering the land below. As you move forward, you're moving towards mountains. There are, there are mountains ahead in the distance. When you look down, you are crossing over what seems to be a massive lake, and it's a strange shaped lake that is very long and thin running from the northeast down to the southwest. As you say, it's a how long? Yes, 500 miles. 500 mile long, thin, almost snake-like lake, or what could be a very wide river. Um, as you're flying over the ice, you look down, all of a sudden, you're almost blinded by what seems to be a glittering of gold, um, what seems to be metallic gold, diamonds, jewelry, um, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is glinting off the sun. 
and coming through the ice up towards your ship. So as you're coming over top, you can see under the ice, uh, down, down below, there seems to be a treasure hoard just frozen below the, the surface of the ice. Frozen into the ice surface, yep. basically. Under the ice. Well, I think we should investigate that. Like, <laughs> that's what we do, isn't it? It is what we do. <laughs> could it be an it's could be illusion, right? Well, there's a, that possibility, but I... Well, take a careful look again, right? Yeah. Looks tell real to me. If, tell us if it doesn't look real. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Okay, so okay, so you are behind the wheel. What are you doing? Is it during the day? I'm not oh, behind. sorry. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. So Agmundar is behind the wheel. I'm taking it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so, uh, so uh, Aratenzar, you have been awakened and called out of your ship to come and look over the side of the ship down. Look what I saw. And you have you are stopping below it. Yeah. Or sorry, above it. Yeah. Okay, so you are 200 feet above. Okay, well, we should go down and take a closer look. Let's go down to the... So right now, you're hovering about that high. Bring the ship down, Captain. Okay, you guys get off. I'll okay. take the ship up to 800 feet. Oh, just, hold, just hold on. You're bringing the ship down to where? To ground level. Yeah, where? To the In edge of to not the on the water, but on the edge. Well, you're where all over the lake. The lake, you said it's a huge lake. So it's a right. Little, Frozen all down to where we see what, what, the ice is. What there. month is it? Uh, the equivalent of er, early early April. The ice is solid. This should okay. still be real solid. We don't won't have any worries about breaking up here. Okay. So not this time of year. Okay, I will drop you two. Okay, but where the ice? Where in relation to the treasure? Um, right above it. Yes, it so would only make sense. So you're coming down direct. So you're going to look down, and you can see it under the. Under yes. the ice that just, is just just for clear. argument's sake, actually, let's go uh, 500 meters north. Right. 500 meters. Yeah. So 100 150 yeah. feet uh, to the north. 500 yards. Sorry. 1500 feet. Sorry. 1500 feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're going towards the, the north. Yeah. You're bringing the ship down. Yeah. So yeah. this so they can drop ropes. Those two will just climb. Yeah. On. Yeah. Well, yeah, but drop they can't just climb on. Yeah. Okay, so the ropes will be dropped. So Zildjian and Agwundar are getting off onto the ice. What is the uh, approximate size of this treasure? Is it just like massive, like underneath the uh, lake? Width, width. Your it looks like it covers. It could. It looks like it's scattered along the bottom of uh, the river, oh, but uh, it looks like it. Le it's about a hundred. It covers about a hundred and twenty feet long. And about a sixty feet wide space. Wow. Agmundur and I are going to salivate. Okay. Might pay for a good night out again, buddy. Oh yeah. After they get off the boat, what are you doing, um, Eritensor? Going up to 800 feet. Okay. And then I'm going to jump down to them. Okay, so the ship is at 800 feet. Yeah. And then you have you have permanent filter foam. Yeah. Okay. So careful. Okay. <laughs> Eritensor will come floating down to you. Okay, so you you are on the icy surface. Of the lake, what do you want to do? Uh, first thing I will you're, do. You're about 1,500 feet from from where this treasure. You're not sure how far below yet the ice surface it, it uh, was. Um, I will bring out. Just hold on. Okay. Will you bring up? Just like grab. Uh, my uh, remora ass. Cold big. Who knows? Maybe this treasure is just a lure of creatures uh, towards it, and maybe that fairy I see on top of it.
Hey, what in, uh, do you have the uh, herb book as well, Zildjian? Yeah. yeah. What kind of stuff grows out here on this kind of conditions in the springtime? Maybe there's a herb that we might find here on, you know, at this time of year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, maybe there's something that won't make us money, but it may be, be very beneficial to us. Yeah. yeah. Right place, right time sometimes. Yeah. So I want to be looking for a locale, like um, what type of locale? It will be tundra uh, yeah. in the spring. Okay. There's um, Ellendil's basket. Locale is tundra. Season is summer. The difficulty is 30%, so that might be adjusted a bit lower. Uh, the effects are the resulting brew is a powerful antagonist to many poisons. If imbibed, it slows the effects of poison tenfold. It also purifies foul, tainted water. The effects last 12 hours after use. Oh, so that would keep you restricted from poison for 12 hours after use too. Uh, I mean, that'd be nice. And but that's summertime you said, right? Yeah, and it slows the effects of poison tenfold. Okay. So locale is tundra, season is summer, and the difficulty is 30%. So that 30% would obviously be adjusted because we're looking for it in spring. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this one's nice. Check this one out. This is uh, Kafkusa. Locale is tundra, but it's also cold wastelands. I'm not sure if this would qualify. Uh, this, is cold, this is considered a cold wasteland. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Well, the difficulty is 70%, which is good. Yeah. Um, the effects, if ingested, the kafkusa leaf doubles the consumer's strength and combative skills, plus 5 to hit and double damage for 1 to 10 rounds. Oh. Warning, if more than two doses are taken within one week's time, the user finds himself reduced to half strength for two to four days. So you can only do it basically once a week, is yeah. what that's saying. Well, that's still, that's a double your strength once a week. That's plus five to hit and double damage. Oh, shit. We should maybe try to look some of that while we're here. Yeah, make a note of that one, Kafkusa. Okay, Kafkusa, is that yeah. one? With a K. Okay. Okay. Air tears, what do you think the odds of just the hoarding treasure just sitting, stumbling across it? I'm, I'm a little worried about uh, maybe a dragon turtle or something <laughs> like that. Ah! <laughs> I've seen your powers. He's got nothing on you, Captain. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, back there, just starting there. Is that open water or? No, it's just place where the wind has blown the ice clean. Clean, right? Clean, and the rest has snow covered yet. Okay. I got another one here. Okay. It's called Talik. We uh, looked at this one last time we were looking for herbs at, um, when we went to the uh, Romans' homelands there. Okay, what's it called? Tholik? Uh, T-E-L-E-K, Talik. Talik? Yeah, the effects, so the locale is tundra and it's spring, difficulty is 40%. The effects are, is, uh, if it's consumed, six Talik berries restores three to 30 hit points of cold-related injury. If six berries are crushed and spread on frostbitten flesh, it miraculously heals all damage within ten rounds. Okay. We might as well be looking for that while we're here, too. That's pretty much it. Okay. Well, that, both of those. That calcus sounds like a good one if we could find some of that. Yeah, I like that one. I mean, speaking as a warrior. Yep. Yeah. 
I mean, even you with your bow like that, plus five, can, that's a big one. Yeah, it's massive. Okay, are you, what do you want to do? What are the three you want to do? Uh, I will uh, untokenize my polar worm while I'm here. Okay, the morons will come out. And then as soon as he comes out, I will cast the familiarization uh, prayer. Again, that make me the pace of skept new. Okay, what are you trying to do? Uh, I want to do telepathy. Okay, okay, so add the telepathy to the. So I have telepathy, so now it goes to 50%. So telepathy is, you only need telepathy once. And oh, okay. Then I would do, what about sharing a healing? Okay, so have you done anything yet? Uh, no. So, so you can do contract with that healing transfer. Okay, but the telepathy is just to let. Okay, okay. You said 25% now, right? Yeah. <laughs> the hell? Okay, all of a sudden, uh, and it was uh, tokenized? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Agmundar brings out a polar worm. That's empty. Okay. And I will give him right off the get go five rook, Robert, because he's he was injured when he went in. Okay. He's at what for? He is at uh, uh, fifty-six of one hundred and forty. Okay. So I'll go with uh, I'll go uh, give him five rook. So let's try this right now. How many that? Oh, well, this is this close to the This is times three and I'll do another one times two rows. Okay. okay. Uh, 51 plus another 83 points total. Okay. So now I'm putting them to you. Okay, the rook is off. Yeah. And the Remoras has been has been healed. He's at 139 out of 140. Okay, first. Nice, nice. Okay, what do you want to do? Uh, start heading toward where we saw the treasure. Okay. What order are you traveling? Uh, I can go first. Yeah, you should take point. Can you can go middle. Or ten, sir, if you want. Yep, I will. You're going like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh. Well, yeah, I so guess. It? Yeah, I drive my wagon all the time. That is true. <laughs> okay. So you begin to move across the ice towards the area where the uh, wind and the sun has swept the ice clean, and you can see the treasure coming through it. How can you that guard up, guys? <laughs> yeah, it seems. What are the odds, Zildjian, of just us stumbling across some treasure? Yeah, I know. I mean, we almost dream of that. Yeah. <laughs> Dreams come true, I guess. What do you have, <laughs> what do you have in your hands, Eretenzer? I have my staff. What do you have in your hands, Eggwinder? Uh, my axe. Shield in the other hand. Okay. What do you have in your hands, Zildjian? I'm going to have a bow. Bow and arrow notched. 
air notch as you move across the snow. You're about 1,500 feet away. You will come forward. You're about 1,000 feet away. You're about 500 feet away. Coming across the snow and the frozen lake, uh, you're about 300 feet away. As always, I'm detecting light. Okay. You are 200 feet away. Where are, so you're detecting light with a radius like this kind of thing, out, out yeah. in front of you as you yeah. move forward. Okay. You're about 100 feet away. You are into that location, moving forward. Um, when I need a surprise roll. Ten side or dance, I need a surprise roll. So I'm only plus one, one. I don't know what everybody else is. Who's I'm plus one surprise? as well. One, one, and again, uh, Tenzar is. Here, Tenzar is a. Surprise, last sheet, combat. Zero. Okay, plus one it is, roll. Six on the dice, so seven. Okay, you're moving a, a long when all of a sudden, Egmundar, you will be walking, you'll be looking down, mainly uh, leading the Remoras, focusing a lot on it not, you not losing control and it turning in an attempt to eat Zildjian um, or, or Eretenzar. You'll be moving forward like that, the way, guys. walking He's down like that, and all of a sudden you'll, you'll look, and at first you think that it may be a little bit of uh, um, vertigo, and then you, it looks like the snow, it looks like the ice is vibrating. Oh, okay, heads up, something's got to burst through. Move to the side. Okay, you go jumping back as soon as Angundar turns, and he calls that out. He gives you guys an, an alert, and all of a sudden you hear a loud sound. The first sensation is sound. And it's a sound that takes a second to realize what it is, but it's a sound of breaking ice. Ice is breaking around you. Could be a polar worm field. Possibly. Mm -hmm. I don't think a dragon, but it could be some form of dragon, maybe. A polar worm field. I was correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, worms are coming, bursting out of the water, smashing through the ice. Okay, the worms come bursting up, rising up in the cold water. Shards of ice go smashing down in all directions. With the, the, in fact, they burst with such force and sending such a spray of ice that it almost becomes like shrapnel. And Mundar's white dragon plate mail um, and his northern nature protects him. The Remoras is also protected, but I need a saving throw from Eretensar. And from and from Zildjian, you want to make a saving throw from ice shards. Make a save, Zildjian. Uh, is is external, external physical. No. Okay, save Eretenzo. External no. physical. Okay, you're both hammered by ice, and, and um, it's not just small things. Large chunks of falling ice 
you both need to take 50 hit points off of one hit. 50 hit points off of one hit. Zildjian, that will put you, your armor adjustment is minus six, so you lose uh, 44, you're down to minus one. What does that put you to, Eretenzar? You are down on the ground on a nine Zildjian, unless you regain this high enough. Or sorry, I mean, says, your stance is high enough. Your stance is one fifth. Yeah. And so you are, what did I just roll? Fifty. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so Zildjian is dropped 50 points off of Eretenzar. Roll in stance. What's your stance, Eretenzar? My stance is one sixth. Uh, you are just down on a on a seven, which puts it at forty-two, and you lost fifty. And you lost fifty. Ice coming down. Both Eric Kinzer and Zildjian are dropped to the ground. Can I try to instant stand? The worms are out. Yet you can roll your instant stand. No, didn't get it. Okay. But you got the surprise roll. It, it is over to your rounds. What are you doing, Agmundar? Uh, can I step in between those two right there? I don't know if I can sweep two of them, or they're pretty big. But. Uh, you cannot sweep, no. Okay, then I'll just go to attack the one on the... Here? Yeah. Okay, Agmundar comes stepping into that one there. At the same time, the Remoras turns to turns to uh, that one there and and goes sliding in to, to attack that one. Okay, you're around uh, Agmundar. Uh, I will do a double damage hack into this creature. Okay. Uh, nope, it's a two. So okay, miss. you step in, you swing your axe at the head of the worm, you will miss. Uh, the polar worm comes moving forward and will tear forward, and it will, it's, 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 its small mouth, round mouth, and with many teeth, will attach itself and hold on to the side of one of the worm's necks. So it has made contact with the side of its neck, preventing that worm from being able to bite the remoras. So worm against remoras have gone against each other. Uh, your rounds are, you can do a healing action if you wish. Uh, Zildjian, do you wish a healing action? Yeah, I'm going to take two rounds. I guess I can't take a potion. You can, this is a healing action. Yeah, okay, I'll take two rook then. Okay, is that everything? Yeah, that's it. Okay, two rook coming off, that puts you down to 14. Yeah, yeah. Roll to see what the rook gives you. Uh, 14 and 16. Okay, so uh, that'd be 30. So you're at 29 points. Okay, so you will take the rook from the ground. Eretenzar, he, uh, you've gone down. Do you do you wish? Are you going to be healing action, prone fighting, prone casting? Prone psionics. Yeah. <clears throat> teleport myself 200 feet up into the air. Okay, so okay, you will teleport yourself 200 feet into the air. <clears throat> Yep, six. Okay, make your, your take off the points. Two hundred divided by five, forty. No. Forty. Yeah. Oh, I saw you jump off the ship. <laughs> okay, Eretenzar Ar goes shooting up into the air. Okay, um, over to the worms. This worm moves in. That one cannot attack because that one's got the side of its neck. This one will attack the side of the remoras. That one will attack the side of the remoras. These two worms here will both attack Zildjian. This one will attack uh, Agmundar. Okay, first of all, against the Remoras, the two worms come forward to attack and to bite. Okay. 
natural 20 on the remoras, cannot swallow it, otherwise it would have been swallowed. Comes in, comes flying in, and will hit it, doing a double damage attack. Off the remora, take off. Forty-nine, fifty-six, one hundred and twelve points off their mortar. So one hit. Yeah. Natural twenty comes in, tears hard into the side of of the remoras, which is pulled off of that other one and pulled down on the ground. You can see the the remoras being mauled by the three polar worms. Okay, this one here strikes down, coming for a, a, a attempting to swallow Agmundar. Uh, 20. Okay, you get the shield up, whoop, the massive head slams A against it, but it, it protects you. Two of the worms striking down onto Zildjian. Can, can I roll a strategic maneuver from the ground? You cannot do strategic maneuver from the ground, no. Can I use ID? Uh, you can try to quick draw from the ground, yeah? Okay, 51%. I do have prone fighting, but I didn't get it. Okay, here we go. Two attempts to swallow. A 7 and a 13. One hits the ice, cracking hard with it with, with its mouth, crunching through ice. The other one comes down and will tear into your leg, tries to pull you up and swallow you, but you, but you end up wriggling free and dropping back down onto the ice surface. One, two, three, four, five. Zildjian, you lose. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. You lose forty-six off of one hit. Forty-six off of one hit, puts you, which means you lose forty, which which means you're minus eleven. Okay, Zildjian's at minus eleven. Rolling stance. It is a three. What is your regain stance? One fifth. You are kept on the ground. The worms are done. It is over to your rounds. I will start with Agmundar. I uh, straight up tokenized my Okay, Agmundar spins around, re reaches for it, touches and tokenizes the polar worm, and then looks up to realize that he's right in the center of four worms looking down at him. Okay, over uh, to over to Zildjian on the ground. Healing action, pro fighting, pro casting. Uh, I got to take another two rook. Okay, taking two rook, putting yourself to twelve rook. Roll for the rook. Uh, that's eleven and twelve. You're at twelve hit points. Over two. Eretens are up in the air and now floating down. What are you doing? I am going to <clears throat> float down a bit and I'm going to disintegrate uh, this one. Okay, one of the ones around Eretens are. Um, sorry, around Agmundar. Okay. Yeah. Make a roll to hit your silent. Four, got it. Okay, cross off the points, and it's a saving throw. Yeah. And is there any, you have the disintegration uh, sound, sound opened? I'll open it right now. Can you parry four big worms? I certainly can, <laughs> and then I'm going to fucking cut four big worms right down. Okay, is there anything about hit points? Maximums, anything? Um, it says the disintegrate uh, science chooses the target, but can disintegrate no more than eight cubic feet of material. So I'm taking an eight cubic foot chunk out of it. Okay, here we go. Saving throw, right? That's yes. a good chunk. So one, you have destroyed that worm. Okay, you take out enough portion that worm goes smashing down towards the, the nice. ground, basically taking out 
an essential portion of the worm. The worm comes crashing down and lies still on the ground. Okay. In the meantime, over to the worms. Three worms bring their massive, unwieldy heads Very down upon Egmunda. Twenty-six. God damn it! All three would have bit you, not swallowed you. But on a twenty-six, whoop, whoop, whoop! You're jumping around, almost waiting for the one, and then springing off to avoid the other one, and then the other one. All three you will block, feeling their massive blows against your shield. These two will strike down into Zilza. Um, I gotta do um, uh, I jitsu again. Okay, try to get your sword out. Fuck! No, I didn't get it. Okay, well, what are you doing? There we go. Here come the two heads. Oh, yeah. oh fuck! Okay, one of them will miss, cracking into the ice. The other one will bite, picks Zildjian off the ground. He's flung through the air, tries to swallow him on the as it throws it up, and then bites. But you will go smashing down hard onto the surface of the ice. Uh, but you are bit. Three. 106 off the bike and hitting the ice. Another three, 109 total. 109 off of, uh, basically off of two hits. Sorry, one hit. 109 off of one hit. So 109 minus your minus six. Minus 91. You're at minus 91, yeah. Okay, over to your uh, yeah, over to your rounds. I'll start with Egmundar. Uh, I'll sweep these three. Okay, Egmundar moves into the three that have just come. Just block all three. On them. A triple damage cross cut. Okay, moving in and swinging around the three massive full uh, Fourteen that will hit the move. And okay, the axe will cut into the heads of the worms. Two hundred and four points. Okay, you have you have uh, seriously you critically injured all three, not quite killed them off all three of the worms. The first one goes crashing to the ground. Second one goes crashing to the ground. Third one goes crashing to the ground, but they are not killed. Okay, so you will cut through. Boom. All right, over to Zildjian. Uh, I'm going to have to take this uh, potion of heal bleeding wounds. It's a full heal. I have one. Okay, so you're drinking a potion of, what do you call you? It's heal bleeding wounds, full heal. Under potions. Should be on the third column, for, uh, fourth item down. Well, I mean, I have a different sheet than you, but heal, hold on. I'm not seeing any, there is no, where is, this is an actual potion? This is a potion, yeah. Cure, cure critical concussion wounds, cure critical bleeding wounds, cure critical mysterious, two cure light mysterious, one cure critical bleeding, one sever tie powder, there is no, you have no healing, no healing potion. I do have one, I guess there's, there's a where? discrepancy in our sheets. Where? Well, I'm no. sending on my sheet, uh, third column, fourth item down under potions. Nope. No, uh, you cure critical concussion wounds, but the, but in that and uh, but in this case you'd want bleeding. You you have a you have one cure critical bleeding wounds, so you may have it as healing, but I have it as cure critical. Yeah, and and that's, have, only, that's only forty hit points, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to take that then. Okay, so I'll take so one cure critical bleeding wounds. Now you actually have two of those. Oh, I have two. Then I'll take both of those. Okay, so I'm crossing off both. Cure critical bleeding wounds. Those are now crossed off. Each one of them will give you 40 points, so that will give you 80. So that puts you to minus 11. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll take another three rook. 
Okay, and I'm crossing off three rook. That puts you to nine rook. Down to nine rook, and roll for the three rook. Sixteen. Eight is uh, twenty-four. You're at three points so far. And five. You're at eighteen hit points total. Yeah. Okay, so Zildjian will heal on the ground, taking potions and cures. Over to Eretenza. I'll uh, disintegrate this guy now. Okay, you continue first of all to fall. That's where you went in the first fall. So I fall second at the fall, rate of two feet per second. Yeah, second fall takes you to there. Okay. Okay, what do you want to do? Disintegrate uh, this other guy. Okay, roll for the sonic of disintegration. Twelve, yes. Uh, Take off the points. Come on now. Saving throw. Come on. Which Come one on. are you trying to do? One of them now. Yeah. One of the Zildjian kit. Here we go. Seventeen saves. Okay, over to their realms. The two worms over Zildjian move off him and straight into Ag Agmundar. The two worms will attack. Bury them. Alert. Oh, natural 20. That's the heads off. Well, okay, you can't, you can't take the heads off of the, the worms. They're too big, so you so can't, it's not applicable in that situation. But you have a 19 uh, parry, right? Uh, well, it's actually 35 parry. Yeah, okay, so you block off. One was a natural 19 coming down, and so you'll get it in. You, you get your shield in uh, to, to block. But you do not get exposed to take heads off because of the size of their necks. Yes. Okay. I got a um, swing. Those <laughs> three have dropped. Okay. Their rounds are done. Over to your rounds. What are you doing, Agmunda? Uh, I will do the same thing on these two. I'll do a triple damage cross okay. cut on these two then. What do you need on the dice? Uh, 14. Okay. 15. Okay. You come down, you strike, and the axe once again burrows into the heads of the polar worms. 160 points. 160 points. The first one is up on a 10. The second one is dropped on a 2. Okay, so that one has now been felled. Okay, over to Zildjian. Do you want to act from the ground or are you getting up? Uh, I'd like to get up. Okay, roll initiative. 3 on the dice and plus 1, so 4. Okay, the worms. Are on a six on the dice even. Your total was four, so you lose initiative. Okay, so you'll pull yourself up. Do you have to do any healing action? Uh, no. Okay. Over to Eretenzer. I am going to uh, levitate this round. Okay. Nine, got it. Okay, take off the initial score, and you will hold yourself levitating. Okay, over to the worms. I'm going to, uh, if I'm that low, I'm going to go up like another 30 feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this one worm will attack Agmundar while these worms slide up. And we're and we're going to be rolling initiative. Okay, let's roll initiative. Agmundar. Eight. Worms are on a two. You can dig it up, but you, they do not get around. This one that does get up will go to swallow it. Very. Seventeen. Yes. Comes down right over top. Head goes right over top of Agundar. Begins to swallow him. You'll twist at the last at the last second. I have a 19 on the dice. One away from swallowing you. You can feel the teeth tearing into your your armor as you are pulled up into the air and flung. You go flying forward. Let's one, two, three, four, five. Damage from the worm attack. 36, 40. 36, 46, 47, 45, 7, 100, 140 points off one hit. 
140 points off one hit. It is a 10. It lands on his feet. Okay, so it will fling you to the point that you hit the ground there. Outside, as it throws up, and it almost swallowed you. Okay, the worms oh, rounds are oh, done. Word. Over to your rounds. I'll start with Egmunder. Uh, I will take a uh, heel from my. Uh, okay, cross heel. off the heel. Over to Zildjian. Um, I've got my bow in my hands, so I'd like to move away from this area as far as I can, actually, without, without, out of range, basically, from these creatures, if I can. And oh, you mean you're turning in, running as far as you can? Um, yes. Zildjian running away? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, okay, so Zildjian will run, turn, and run in that direction. <laughs> the metal I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always just get him. That's just one round. Relax, guys. Relax. Relax. I got to turn around. Six fucking okay. more worms, Johnny. Over, Hard to relax. Over to Eritensa. <laughs> I'm going to uh, maintain levitation. Mm -hmm. And, oh man, I'm going to uh, put down a uh, 15th level astral construct right next to Agmunder. Okay, give him a little bit of backup down there. Roll to, cre <laughs> roll, okay, to, roll to create the astral construct. Thirteen, got it. Okay, take off the points. Uh, out of ectoplasmic, an astral construct has been created. Okay, over to the worms rounds. Uh, the astral construct acts immediately. That's what it says? Yeah. Okay. And uh, he will go forward and hit the nearest worm. Level 15. He will come in. He will strike the worm. Worm's lost 160 points. He will take off uh, 16, 17. He'll take off 32 points. Okay, 32 more points into that worm. The worm spins around and will strike the astral construct. This worm here will come around and attack Agundar. This worm here will move forward and, uh, and attack the astral construct. This worm here will attack, will, uh, hold on, this goes in pursuit of Zildjian fleeing. Then this one rises to its feet and will go initiative with the astral construct. Roll the six set of dice for the astral construct. Six on the dice. They add the, it does not, the worm does not get attacked this round. Okay, so two worms, two worms striking at the astral construct. You have the hit points of the Astral Concert? 150. Yeah. Okay. Natural 20. <laughs> wow. Well, probably, probably, probably better than he got it than you guys. Uh, very true, <laughs> actually. Okay, your Astral Construct has been destroyed. You just kind of lose. You just, okay, it swallows it, and then it has, unfortunately, nothing in the worm's belly. Okay. Um, so, it's, the so he's still hungry. Swallowed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, over to this one will attack Eritenza. Or sorry, will attack Agmunda. Very. Okay. Uh, 26. You get the shield up and you'll block off the head. One comes pursuing, pursuing Zildjian and strikes at him from the back. Can I not uh, roll skirmish withdrawal? withdrawal? Skirmish withdrawal? No, because you're running away and it's chasing you from behind. You move, you move backwards with the skirmish withdrawal. Okay, I'm going to. I got to roll Ajitsu then. Okay, roll Ajitsu. Fuck no. Okay, here comes the attack. 17 on the dice. It tears into you, picks you up off the ground, flings, and throws you. Eighty-six off one hit. 86 off one hit, that's 80 points off. Uh, so you are 
80 points minus 18? 62. Minus 62. And Zildjian has been thrown and is down and stunned on a 1. Okay, over two. The worms are done. Over to your rounds. What are you doing, Aguna? Uh That one right in front of me. Then hit right. me. I'm going to. Uh, I'm just going to. Do, was that one injured? Yeah, that one was okay. Then I'm just. I want to do a double damage hack. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come over top of the hack. Okay. I uh, nope, know. You step in, swim with the axe. You will miss the badly injured worm. Over to Zildjian. Uh, fuck. I I can only do healing, right? Yeah. So just so so just let's make sure that we that we're both on the same page for what you have under your uh, healing. Yeah. One critical concussion, one cure critical concussion wound, uh, one cure critical mysterious wound, two cure light mysterious wounds, um, one cure light burns. Um. One cure serious burns, nine rook, four shepherd's purse, two go through, five palma eldath, three frost teal pastes, two blind or uh, sorry, uh, la, la, la. one giant spider antidote, and one yeah, yeah, that's it for you. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to take uh, all nine of these rook. Okay, nine rook are coming off. Okay, so nine rook. Okay, is that your full healing round? Yeah. Okay, nine rook coming off. Don't roll yet, but get ready to roll. Over to Air Tenza. Fuck. Okay, maintain uh, levitation. levitation, and I'm going to have to disintegrate that one. That's on uh, Zildjian. Zildjian, yeah. Okay, roll your disintegration. Twelve, got it. Okay, take off the points for the maintenance and for the initial score. Making a saving throw for the worm over top of Zildjian. Uh, the worm does not save on a seven. It has been killed. The worm goes collapsing down as, it, as its throat is torn out and then goes slamming down onto the ice. Okay, um, over to the worm's rounds. Four worms attack Egmundar. Uh, strategic withdrawal? Yeah, maneuver, strategic maneuver. Yeah, strategic maneuver, sorry. Yeah, it's a key time for it. No strategic maneuver? No. Uh, that's one that you should want. Yeah, the percentages are usually by your dodge. Oh, wait. Yeah, I got it here. Oh. I got a strategic maneuver. Yeah. Okay. So then you roll a percentage, right? Okay. Uh, no, don't get it anyway. Okay, four times. Here they come. Oh, natural 20. Okay, good. <laughs> Again, so spinning around, you block off two massive slams against the shield, but weaving, dodging, and spinning around the four worms, you're not actually hit. Uh, two of the worms lying dead, four of them around uh, Agmundart. It is over to your rounds. I'll go to Agmundart. But since I can't cut their head off, but it says if I roll a natural 20 on fair, I get a plus 4 to counter. Yep. Okay, then I'm going to do, I'm going to sweep these three. I'm just going to do a double damage. Nope, I'm going to do the cross cut because it seems easier to run around with a cross cut on all four of these. So, okay, so that's you get extra plus, plus, two, four, plus two. Plus two on the yeah. Okay, so I need 13, 14, 12. You need 12, yep. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, a 12 on the dice. Wow. Okay, the axe comes sweeping around, cutting into the four heads of the worms. 160. 160 points. By the end of the swing, all four of the worms have come crashing down and lie still on the ice. 
No, sorry, Robert, it's 140. Well. Well. Well done, buddy. <laughs> How are you doing over there, Zilger? One more round. We gotta go check to see if the in that. I'm just floating okay. the ground, not maintaining anything. Okay, you will float. Robert, do I need to roll my rooks there? Yep. Here we go. Nine rooks. How are you? Or how are you rolling? Uh, well, one at one at a time. Because you, you only have two tens or what? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Six. Nine is 15. Uh, seven is 22. Eight is 30. Nineteen is 49. That's five. Yeah. Seven is forty-seven. Seven is so you're forty-nine before, and you're old seven. You have fifty-six and this one now. Okay, sorry, fifty-six and seven is uh, sixty-three. Okay. Uh, and nine is seventy-two. Okay. One more. And nine is uh, eighty-one. Okay, you, are, you have 19 hit points. I wasn't running away, guys. I was trying to get into range. I know what you're doing. I know. We're just giving you a hard time, buddy. <laughs> I, got, I got fucked up that fight. <laughs> yes, you did. I pretty much you expended all my hit points, guys. If you swallow you, it's big trouble. That's all I know. Yeah. Okay, what do you want to do? All right, press on. Go to where we found what does the, that. Mean? What do you want to do? Go to find the treasure. Yeah, we're going to find the treasure. It's right here. Okay. <clears throat> okay so you move forward to the cleared part of the lake. Below here, you can see the the treasure. Now the tricky part is to get it out. Throws it in ice. They got any way to melt ice other than that? The old-fashioned way of a fire. As a matter of fact, I do. Okay. Well, <laughs> of course you do. I had no, I had no doubts <laughs> in your abilities, Captain. <laughs> Sorry. I hate to ask, but do you guys uh, have any rook that you could spare? Yeah. Here. Uh, take. Uh, hang on. What I got here. Take six rook from me. Here. Okay, I'll get you back. That one, whenever, yeah. I would just pay for it now. What do you mean to get you back? Yeah, I could just pay for it. Yes, you could. Six rook, okay. and then you're transferring 30,000 over? Yeah, I'll pay you for it, Agmundar. Okay, so okay. you have 273,000 left. 30,000. Okay, and six, six rook added on. Six rook taken off Agmundar. Okay. What are you what are you gonna do? <clears throat> what do you got? Air tens are for this. Molecular agitation. That probably is the ticket for this actually. <laughs> yeah.
I could have been a lot worse. <laughs> like a lot worse. It could like have gone very badly. Like smaller, kind of the nice bite. Nice guys. And 20 is not a good. And some good axe swinging. Yeah. With a thick neck, actually. <laughs> It's all key. It's all positioning. Getting yourself in the right position. Yeah. Draw them in. <laughs> that disintegration worked well because I knew they wouldn't. Have, I mean, their saving throws were going to be pretty average. Yeah. Like they're a big, mean creature, but they're. Okay. What are you good? I'm going to uh, use molecular agitation to melt the ice. Okay, so you're assuming you're going to go stand over top of the ice? Yeah. And you're going to do what? You're just going to focus on it and heat it up. And what is the description, sir? Molecular agitation enables the user to excite the molecules of, of a substance. Um, area of effect is one item or 20 pounds of material. So in round one, readily flammable materials such as paper and dry grass ignite. Skin becomes red and tender. Uh, and two points of damage. So by round three, um, it says that water boils, lead melts after what? three rounds of well, concentration. Well, round two, sir? Round two, uh, wood smolders and smokes, metal becomes hot to the touch, skin blisters, hair smolders, paint shrivels. Okay. Okay. Nasty one. Okay. So, okay. Okay. okay, so you're going to begin the Molecular agi agitation? Yeah. Okay, we roll to begin it. Okay, molecular agitation. Listen. Two, got it. Okay, so you have commenced molecular agitation. Yes. Now, first of all, take off the initial score. Yep. Then take off uh, two, two rounds of maintenance. Yeah. Okay, and by that point, you have basically done the equivalent of drilling a hole for like ice fishing down into the ice. So you so you've broken through all the way down. You've basically so the ice. See where water and so, is. Though. And so now water comes up, mm -hmm. and so you have a hole. You estimate that that the ice is about 15 feet thick. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you have actually gone, and so you have gone all the way through. You bore a hole through. Big enough for us to get through? No. Nope. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Yes. Maybe Keep bigger right. so we can get Maybe through. Another round of a, of a maintenance. It's now the it's now big enough for a person to drop into. All right. So are you continuing the uh, the assignment? Uh, no, I'm stopping there. Okay. The sound of cults. Okay. So so uh, Ara Kenzer in four rounds has drilled uh, a a about a five foot hole through the center of of the ice. Okay. All right. I ha I can breathe underwater. I can breathe underwater. I can so also. I can see underwater too. I can see. Yes. Okay. So I I'll, I'll I have a Palma Eldath. Do you have uh <clears throat> it keeps you warm for twelve hours? Uh well I I have uh protection versus cold from my armor and my shield, white <clears throat> dragon shield. Armor but that one. I'll You're going down wearing that? No, I'll go down all right. You're right. I can't <laughs> wear that. Okay. So white dragons non encumber You could actually, with white dragon army, you could sleep and slip into the coldest of waters and not get cold. There you go. Okay. All right. I, 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 look, I have uh, all my thoughts and I have breath control ability. Your, your sound is terrible, just by the way. So what did you say there? I have mm -hmm. breath control mm -hmm. ability. Hi. Okay. Well, we're going to need somebody up here. Yeah, we're stay up top and watch. Yeah, I was going to say. Maybe I should have freezes over here. <laughs> Mind you, you know what? I am not going to be much use down there. I'll go, I'll go up. That's okay. Why don't you, Zildjian, take my pen into water? Can he see underwater? He's good. But how's he going to die? I'll give him one of my... Uh, one of my Palma Elda to eat. And do you know have you the description? Do you eat I have five of them of my own. Yeah. You know, which is in a general situation of okay. oh, I'm so cold. 
but is, this is, is, cool. it, is it enough to stop you from dying? I mean, that's a, okay. That's, that's the question. That's a more. That's a more difficult. Oh, why don't I just go down and look? Okay, you go down and look. Will uh, Zildjian keep a close eye on what he's doing? Can you keep an eye on him? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Best I can. <laughs> okay, and I'll uh, make. I'll keep scanning for. Uh, make sure this hole doesn't freeze over either. Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm gonna be scanning for life forms. So you're you're gonna drop into the water. Yeah. And then what are you What are you going with? Uh, I'm gonna go with my uh, put my axe because tattooed, but I will take my spear. Okay. I think a spear I can thrust under mm -hmm. water. Uh, my dragon plate mail and my backpack of holding. Backpack of holding. Okay, so you're gonna take the backpack of holding. Okay. Uh, um, and I don't know if you want to take that down into water. Well, I'll start to fill it up with water is what you're yeah. concerned with. Yeah. Okay, just a. But won't water go in and out of it? And if I won't water displace out, if I put a, a solid item in, water would displace out, wouldn't it? Do we have like a, if you have a bucket and you put a bucket in water and submerge it in water and you drop stones into that bucket, the water will the, the stones will stay in the bucket and the water will leave the bucket. Hmm. It'll do the same same concept. It'll displace the water. It's just pure. It's physics. Didn't you pay attention in class, Air Tens are to that? So you're taking your white dragon armor. You're taking your backpack of holding. Yeah. And your spear. Yeah. And I'm taking uh, I'm taking uh, one of my uh, uh, Nello and tea. Okay. So you've got. I'll take my herbs actually. Okay. Where are these herbs going? Oh, never mind. I'll just take one Nello and tea, and I'll just put it in my uh, like uh, inside your armor. Yes. So you're taking. So I have one. So you're taking Nello and tea. You're taking your armor. Yeah. You're taking a spear. Yeah. And you're taking your bag of holding. Yes. It's a spear bag. Now I go. Okay. So the tens are or a uh, moves to the edge of the ice, and he drops through the ice, and he is yeah, gone. Like, what the fuck? But you can see him because of the nature of the clarity here. You can actually, well, my you ring can actually off watch him. Like my ring, ring if our, if ours ring. Which has what? It's just a ring, but it has a teleport one person per level on it, and my rings I would wear too. Okay, hold on. So, okay, so because you, you're trying to tell me your ring you're carrying, so now you're adding stuff. So you're taking what? How many rings? I'm taking uh, two rings. Okay. And then my mithril circlet of <coughs> tarclax, because that's what allows me to see and breathe okay, so underwater. Okay, so you've got so you're so two so you have a circlet around your head. Yeah. And and that allows two you rings to on. see and breathe underwater. Yeah. Okay, and you got two rings. And yeah. what do the rings give you? Uh, the ring just the ring has a bunch of different actions. It, there's not much left on it, but one has a teleport person, and the other is immune to heat and flame. Okay. Just. Okay. Because the rings, I don't think they're gonna. Okay. So Ag so Agmundar is in the water. When you get into the water. Oh, right. Sorry, my bracelet for the action. Okay. So Agmundar gets back out of the water, <laughs> onto the surface, and he's having preparation. Cool, and he's going to his pack, and he's putting on his yes. uh, his uh his that circuit. He's putting on two rings, and then and then what is this last thing now? The bracelet of free action. And then he's putting a bracelet on his wrist. With that bracelet of free action, couldn't you just have all of your equipment with you anyway? But you still can't swing like an axe or a shield or any of that stuff. It doesn't allow okay. that. All right. Okay. Like, okay. And then, then you move back to the edge, and I do their drops in, in the water. Okay. You will see him swimming over over top of of uh, treasure along the bottom of the river. Uh, he's about forty feet below the surface of of the ice. So you can see you'll just see a little glimpse of him way down low, but the treasure is what is. Shine back. Okay, there's treasure all over the bottom. It's just kind of spewing along the Looking bottom. Looking for shine like diamonds, that kind of stuff. Rubies, like gems, not so you're platinum. So you're basically sw swimming over and, and okay. Okay, so what is your overall plan here? Just going to wait for him to come back yeah. up. Okay, and when he comes up, then we're going to take his loot. See what okay, so your portion is... So you're so okay. So how much of this treasure are you collecting here? What what is your plan? 
plan is to we'll go uh, down as many times as need be okay, to, so to bring up all the treasure okay, as much so as we possibly can bring up. So you're yeah. standing outside while I wonder is diving and bringing up treasure. Yeah. Because this is what we're here for. <laughs> this is exactly what we're here for. <laughs> you may as well take the time to get it. As long as them and their friends don't decide to show up. Yeah. Might well deal with that if they do. That's true. I have no fear. I'm, I'm sure you guys are taking a good watch up there. <laughs> <laughs> When we need to drill a hole for we should have just gone out where they bust up out there. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any way to detect magic? No. Yes, you, you have, uh, do you have any way to, to detect magic items? Magic uh, items. No. Uh, yeah, I think I do. Yes, I have detect magic. You, you have a spell? Yeah. Okay, cast the, the spell as the magic gets brought up. You also have an alchemist, Zildjian, yep. to determine items. Yep. So, for half click here and deco. With a little roll, to take off the points. 14, you took off the points for those three undead spells that you cast before? I did. Okay. So far, who is keeping track? I, I, I need somebody to keep a list. Okay, um, just grab a sheet of paper here. You draw it, here it ends there. Got it. Okay, 1,000 copper pieces. Uh, a a uh, jewelry clasp. Worth 400 gold. Um, a shield that is. 400 gold. Yeah, 400 gold. A shield that is damaged and battered and is now worthless. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring that one up. It looked good at the water. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, he's been seeking out gems. Um, I'm going to be, okay, so you do have an alchemist here. Yeah. So alchemist, yeah. Uh, what is your uh, distinguished gem? 40%. Okay, get, get ready to roll on each of these gems that come up to see if they have magical qualities. Otherwise, you can mark them down, uh, Eretenzer. Okay, a tiger eye agate. Roll. No, I didn't get it. Okay, worth uh, 100 gold pieces. A uh, a a banded agate. Gold. Fuck no. Worth 10 gold pieces. A chrysoberyl. Gold. Yeah. And 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 then take a 10-sided dice, call a number, and roll it. Uh, nine. See no. Nope. It's six. Okay, Chrysoberyl, 1,000 gold pieces. Jeez. Damn. No, that, that roll there is for a jetstone. Okay. Did you get it? No, I didn't get it. Okay, a jetstone worth 500 gold pieces. A uh, pearl. No. Worth 500 gold pieces. Okay. Uh, in a different little uh, batch, he's found a, a Peridot. Roll it. No. Worth a thousand gold pieces. Are you still Peridot? P-E-R-I-D-O-T. A Peridot, worth a thousand gold pieces. Uh, a Blue Quartz. Nope. Worth 65 gold pieces. A Fire Opal. No. With 900 gold pieces. In another batch of gems, there is a piece of rock crystal. Yes. Call a number roll it. Did you say rot or rock? Rock. rock. I'm going to roll, uh, go for five. 
Uh, it's a three. Rock crystal worth a hundred gold pieces. A topaz. Nope. Worth a thousand gold pieces. A lapis lazuli. Yes. Roll again. Six. No, eight. Worth twenty gold pieces. Okay, and uh, then. A cloak. There's a cloak, and the, and the magic detection will indicate it's a cloak of protection. It is. It's a plus twenty-five cloak of protection. Uh, there is a. There is an oil of acid resistance. There is uh, a set of boots of varied tracks. And then in brackets, were horse, rabbit, mule, lion. Horse, rabbit, mule, lion. There is a filter of persuasiveness. Okay, that is the treasure that will be brought back up off of the surface of the, or the bottom of the river. That is quite the hole. Not bad. Yeah. What is the uh, exchange rate from gold to uh, copper? Ten to one. Gold. Uh, gold is presently worth twenty copper. Oh, twenty to one. Even better. Did we find any of those gems have any magical properties? Nothing. That's he was checking. That's we he. To get good. Okay. And uh, my magic detection came up with nothing on the jewelry clasp and that <coughs> scratchy old shield. Correct. Okay. Good. All right. That's uh. We'll what do we have the for gems? cash? What do we have for cash? That process takes about three and a half hours. All right. I am going to then. Go get the ship. Okay. Teleport up to the ship. Okay. How many channel points do you have before you do the teleport? I have 53 psionic points. Okay. Teleporting up to the ship. 19 missed that one. How many points does that cost? That costs 10. Okay. And 10 more. Twenty. What does that do? What does that do? I think I'm disoriented for a bit. We're not going anywhere for a while. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> no effect. Okay, let's so take off uh, ten more points. One more. Two. There we go. Okay, we teleport to the ship. And I'll bring it down. Okay, the ship is brought down. Okay, the ship is hovering just above the surface of, of the lake. Everyone's you're taking, you're, you're you're taking, a load. On ship, you're yeah. taking the treasure onto the ship. Yeah. yeah. And then the ship's going up again. Yeah. Good work, guys. Good work. Good haul. Sorry I couldn't contribute more to that fight, guys. That's okay. You uh, took the hits that needed to be taken. <laughs> You've been shooting above your weight in the last few battles, everybody. <laughs> You're okay. You hold your own. Don't worry, buddy. Don't sweat it. I'm just thankful nobody got swallowed whole because that all of a sudden throws a whole new spin onto things. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it is panic mode. Because it doesn't, there's the acids in their stomach are bad. Like one, maybe two rounds, two rounds to get out, maybe. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. Boy, it's, yeah. And it's not just a raised dead because you'll be disintegrated in there. 
is what yeah. will happen. Like you won't just be dead. You'll be. I'm going ice fishing with you. We have to work to get that whole jump. <laughs> There's one item at some point I would like to, maybe we could go look for it. It'd be very difficult to find. It's a crystal shard. Uh-huh. It's undetectable. It's like a relic. The last one, I, my family does have one, but we just it was just one of those things you stumbled across. We didn't know what it was, and I just got the pick and took it and bonus. Mm -hmm. And I've been looking for the, there's three of them supposedly for the legend. And when you combine them with the power increases as you go, you get all three. You can basically, according to legend, you can move mountains, like literally move mountains. So, so I keep looking everywhere I go. <laughs> just on the off chance, stumble across it. You want to go that way? No. Okay, you're on the boat, going up into the air. You've lost about four hours of flying time today. What is your intention? With the treasure. Split it up. Okay, go ahead. All right, so. What do you got for total, sir? Let me see here. Ninety-four thousand nine hundred. Okay, and what do you have for items? For items, we have um, a busted-up nasty old shield. Okay, so what do you have for actual <laughs> items that are worse? Okay. Oil of acid resistance, boots of buried tracks, and filter of persuasiveness. I threw the jewelry clasp in as money. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It works out between three of us, 31,633 proper pieces of person. 31,000 what? 31,633. That's what we're adding? Yeah. Can you just repeat that number one more time? 31,633. Zildjian, you have 304,924. Okay. What do we want? Just roll for the picks. Does anybody need, does anybody, is anybody wearing particular boots? Uh, Supernatural boots? No. I just no. Does anybody know what the boots do? I'm assuming you, they disguise your tracks, I'm guessing. You say you make your tracks look like horse, rabbit, mule, or lion. Okay. Then that, it could be good if you're trying to... Okay, so oil of acid, resistance, filter, persuasiveness, and the boots. Should we just all yeah. roll? See, because there's one item for each of us. That's what it'll work out to. Yeah. Okay, each of you roll a 27 dice. Zildjian, Zildjian roll. Ten of the dice for me. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Ten wins the pot. Zildjian, what do you want? Um, yeah, I guess I'll take the boots. Okay, so if you're not wearing any other type of boots, uh, put down uh, boots of varied tracks. Okay. 
And then in brackets, uh, put down, what is it? What are the animals? Horse, rabbit, mule, rabbit. and something else? Lion. Horse, rabbit, mule, mule lion. lion. And then, and then in beside the boots, put down 100% in brackets. Okay. So that they're not damaged. Okay. And then, okay. So who 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 got the next highest roll? I did. Oil. Okay. Would you, do you want the filter of persuasiveness or the oil of acid resistance? I'm going to take the oil of acid resistance. That okay. worked out real well because right. I will want to take that filter of persuasiveness. I'm sure you do. I'm going to toss that in the medicine cabinet actually. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> if anyone's in uh, ever, ever in need of making of um, one of those oil of acid resistance, I can make a potion. So. If you want, want to cover your weapon or cover an item. Okay. You are continued you are continuing to fly? Yeah. Yep. I wonder if we'll see any other treasure down there. Okay, and that was on the seventh that you left skipped? Yes. Okay. Okay, so it is now the morning of the eighth. You with your lost hours down below, you you you've traveled about six hundred miles from skipped. Oh, hold on a second. No, you were because that wasn't your first day, that was the no, second that was, day. Uh, uh, sure. 1100. Yeah, so seven. Seven miles in. When you where you got the end. Yeah. Area. So okay. So actually by. Okay. So at the end of this second day of travel, it's now the morning of October the ninth. It is the morning of October the ninth, and you've traveled 1,320 miles. So you want to go okay. to the map? So hold on. 13. 13.2 two centimeters. You are from skip. So I have to heal up before I can start recovering psionic points again, right? That is correct. Okay, so I'm going to be taking They're above in the mountain range, basically. Brooks until I'm healed. See, so you're flying over mountains. Yeah, in this mountain range up here, whatever that is there, and we'll across there. Okay. Okay, so I'm down fifty one. I'm now down thirty five. I am down to 25, 24. I am down 11. I am down 3 points. And 3, three points. Gonna, is I'm it going to make a difference on your? I'm not going to take it. I'm like for your regain of your silent points and okay, stuff. Okay, so cross off, cross off four rooks. Okay, so you will get up into the air, and by evening, Eretenzar is flying the ship through the night. It is now the morning. Of October the eighth, Eretensar is going to bed to try to get these three points, these points back, so we can then begin to get his sonic points back. Okay, and we're going, going, so going into October the ninth, rolling encounter and weather. Okay, Eretensar, what, what is your constitution? Eighteen. Okay, you can heal up two points during during the day. You will then take over the ship flying at night. 
Um, Zildjian, you so far you can heal yourself up four points. You're at twenty three. Are you wounded, Egwunder? No. Okay. You fight on the ice all the time, sir. Yeah, much better up here. By the end of the night, you are at a mark 2,000 miles, 2,040 miles, or 20.4 centimeters north of Skift. 20.4 centimeters from Skift. How far left to Mount Morawicke? Mm -hmm. so you, I think we're there. You're, you're at your 20.4 centimeters. 20.4 centimeters from skip. Yeah. For my initial calculation, it was at least 3.33 days. But it's 24 centimeters right to more, Mount Morwick. Yeah, and you're 20.4. Oh, 12. Oh, sorry, I was okay. We're right here then. Okay, so you're well over top of the Great Glacier as you Come move back. As, back. as you move into your fourth day yeah, travels. You move yeah, into the tent. Like forest. There are tens on you. Get your hit points to full. Okay. This morning you are following the a set of mountains moving <coughs> northwards where we are. Eratenzar is in his cabin sleeping during the day. A Mundar is flying the ship following the range of mountains moving ever northward. Zildjian, you are up as well when you see a mountain rising up. A, a large mountain, the largest in the range, called Mount Morawickic. It comes rising up, and it is a strange, almost twisted shape, making it look from a distance like it is uh, an icicle rising out of the mountains. And as you move forward, you can see an ice palace, an ice palace and an ice temple built into the side of the ice mountain. So there's a nice face that is constructed further past the mountain along the side of the opposite side of, uh, of uh, Mount Morawickic is, is, an orcish, is an orcish town. So by late morning you have arrived at Mount Morawickic. These are friends. The orcs? Yeah. Uh, what do you call friends? <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough town. <laughs> oh, you're really rough town. Just ask my uncle Eivgar. Okay. A, he got stuck up there. He mm -hmm. had to uh, pour himself out to raise enough money to get home. <laughs> <laughs> it was wow. quite a few days he spent there. <laughs> well, you know, he was into the sauce quite a bit. And he usually didn't have a lot of money. And, well, one thing led to another. And have you heard of the the Luthic, the Orcish uh, ceremony they do? It's a fertility thing. It's 
It's very entertaining. <laughs> yes, I've been involved in one of those myself. <laughs> <laughs> if you do enough drugs, it's all good. <clears throat> okay, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'd like to, if I can, go seek the audience with my lady. But I'd like. Okay, so you will take the ship and you will approach uh, the palace and the temple built into Mount Moro Morawicki. Um, you can see at the very base that there is a large um, there's a large gate at which you can enter the bottom of of uh, the mountain. So what's happening with the ship? What are you doing? So this is a castle? Yes. I say we fly right up to the tallest spire and no. disboard there. No, we just no. go in the, at the bottom like normal people and go up and seek audience the proper way because okay. we don't start at the top <laughs> <laughs> because we'll be put to the bottom. I'm just All telling right. you what will happen to us, my friend. All right. Yeah. Yeah, let's there's abide no, by customs. There's, no, uh, there's no body of water here to uh, put in. No, you could just leave it floating here, close to the safe here. Your ship is safe here. There's no port fees. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. We'll find an appropriate place to uh, disembark then. No, where, I don't know. Yeah. The, what, what would be an appropriate well, place? Just, no, I mean, how are you getting off the ship? We'll bring, bring it down just above the okay. ground yeah. level. Can't can, can it just sit there like this well, far I'll off take the it ground? Back up again. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. Okay, so the ship will come down. Zildjian and, Ag and Agmundar will get out of the ship. Eretenza will take the ship up, and then he will jump off the side of the ship. So the ship is hovering outside of Mount Morwickick. Gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Okay.
Yeah, I'm back. Yay. <laughs> How did we end up in a circle like this? Good question. Oh, I think we walked into here to enter the town, maybe? I believe so, yes. Okay, you will enter the palace, the inside at the bottom, move through the icy levels, working your way in what seems like a as if you're moving tunnel to tunnel with with icicles, stalactites, stalagmites, gradually working your way uh, further and further up um, through the through the palace. Uh, you will you will walk for about 15 to 20 minutes when you enter a vast open chamber. It's almost as if there's nobody here. It seems empty and ab and, and abandoned. When you come up to on uh, one icy icy uh, plateau, you will move up. You can see a pool which seems to be uh, uh, there. There is water here, and you will you will enter, and there you will come across the Lady of the Snow Mist. What are you doing? Uh, first thing I'll do is bow down with respect to, to my lady. And uh, <clears throat> she will say grandson. In uh, Norse, she will say uh, welcome home. And she'll put out her hand and let you kiss yes. her hand. Uh, she stands in complete form-fitting armor uh, that covers her skin and is almost skin tight giving her skin a white, uh, a bluish-white ice-type appearance. You see no particular features or features on her face because it is covered in the armor that covers every inch of her, of her skin. Um, and on the face, it is skin-tight, but it just shows a featureless woman. Uh, she has white uh, hair. Um, she wears a blue dress, and she carries some type of icicle staff. Uh, wand weapon. It's hard to say because it is constantly changing shape. She will. Uh, she will then move past Agundar to the other two, and she will say, "Oh, she'll speak Norse. She'll say, grandson, you have brought me a squidling. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Eric Kenzar, that I travel with and has helped on many adventures we've been on. Who it has been a long time since I have seen an illithid. He's a good friend of mine. Speak, Illithid. I have heard many tales of you, great lady, and surely I recognize that your stature demands the respect that I give you. Quite. She will she will she will put out her hand to you. I will fondle her ring with my tentacle. As soon, or, 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 I will touch her ring with my tentacle. With, with your 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 facial tentacles? Yeah. Okay. Your tentacle will reach out and touch. Which is same thing as roll the hit. Do you have any protection from cold? Protection from cold. 
right through the tentacle. As soon as your tentacle no. touches her, you can feel cold coming back, flowing through you, Whoa, like a big rush coming back through the tentacles, almost like a brain, which like a massive brain freeze mm -hmm. uh, from drinking Slurpee too fast as your tentacle goes on there, comes rushing back. That is the first sensation you hit. You can feel the cold going back through your brain. You have no protections from cold. Your metabolism is slowed down, slowed down, slowed down. You see the illicit skin color completely change, and, he's, and, and he stands there. It looks like he has been frozen. He just stands there. In the meantime, she will, <laughs> she will pull her hand back from, from the, uh, the elephant, and she'll walk towards the human. But what is this? This is my uh, friend Zildjian who travels with us. He is a member of the party of Bend as well. Can you, can you understand what we are uh, saying, human? Is she speaking Norse? Yes. Uh, I can understand on a three. Okay. Can you understand me? Um, vaguely. Right. Good try. She'll say, uh, what is your name? Ziljan Singh. Ziljan Singh. Where do you come from, Ziljan Singh? I come from Shimar. Do you indeed? Let me see your face. I'll pull back my uh, cowl and show her my face. I have nothing to write home about, but reasonably attractive. Decent build. What, Zildjian, would you say you're, what are you, 5'9"? Uh, yeah, I'm about that. Mm. <coughs> In good shape. How old are you, about 25? Uh, uh, yep. Indeed, indeed. 28 to be exact. Uh, how long, oh, oh, why are you here? Uh, we're here because uh, we want to travel the lands of the Great Glacier. Uh, you have nothing else to occupy your time facing off against the arrival that you well, have to I'm here travel to, the Great Glacier? We're here to, I'm here to give information, just information as we're coming up, but uh, it's dealing with it. We're invading into Zamora and Aquilonia has taken advantage of the situation and it's invaded into the border kingdoms. Yes, yes. So the armies move in uh, Hyboria, yes. And uh, I really just came up to pay my respects to you as much as anything else. It's been a long time since I've been here and I feel every time I leave I feel uh, charged with energy. Yes, so. yeah, yeah, <laughs> quite. Um, but uh, more interestingly, it looks like you have at least brought me um, a toy to play with, which is at least decent. Have you ever forgotten your no. old grandmother? Um, yes, well, go off. And, uh, there are many accommodations in the palace. How long, uh, how long do you intend to stay? Uh, I would assume uh, two days tops. And be on our way. Two days. Are you particularly tired? Have you traveled far? I uh, would travel 3,000 miles from Skip. The uh, the human looks looks uh, wounded. The human is wounded. He could use definitely rest and uh, heal. Make sure he's healed. Make sure he's clean. To make sure that okay. he is. Uh, make sure that he is ready for me. I will. Um, I will. Uh, I will have food sent to you once you are done eating. Okay. Um, bring him to me in my own quarters. Okay. <laughs> and uh, she will, she will, she will slide away. Okay, Zildjian, it's time for you to clean up your act. <laughs> Take one for the team. <laughs> I actually didn't fully understand what was um, communicated there. What's going on? You only speak Norse on a three, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm supposed to, uh, what do you have for hit points? 23 out of 43. 23 out of 43. Uh, here, take three. <coughs> okay. Okay, so uh, you mean that you want to Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Zildjian, roll, roll for the first rook. 
Uh, that's 18. Right. Uh, 13. Hold on, because you've been giving yourself 31 points. Uh, so you're back at full. Yep. And so you only have to use two of it. He's being healed. You will, you will both. So you're going to go get set up in quarters? Yes. And then it, okay, you know, so you yeah. go and you're ready. It's yeah. basically like being into a hotel that has an ice, uh, that has an ice, uh, ice MO2. So you're in. So you're in this ice uh, ice palace. Um, you will be able to mark paralysis wears off after a while. You yeah. So basically, what happens to you is you everything largely goes black, um, and um, you and after you're told that you were, your body your body metabolism was largely slowed because she basically froze you to a point where she put you into stasis. Mm -hmm. Um, and once you start to warm up, you come out of it. It's quite uncomfortable and not pleasant um, as you come out of stasis and you warm up again. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so but so a total of about half an hour before you feel okay again. All right. Okay. You will uh, just show you how how uh, vulnerable you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You so you will get set up into a room. Okay. And uh, yeah. food will begin to get brought to you. So um, in your room, there will be uh, there will be a a place to bathe in warm water. So it's okay. like a hot spring in your room. Okay. Oh. Ah. No. So clean up. Yes, and have that yeah. exactly. Get that. Yes, I she did. wants that human. So have him clean. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. so yeah. Get yourself pretty up. I still don't know what is going on. It's for the best. <laughs> yes, you know, it's not bad. I mean, it just, just enjoy the hotel and enjoy the festivities. Okay. okay. So, so Zildjian is clean. My lady wants audience up. with you later on. And she expects you to be, we have your best foot forward, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> you're well, you're in the presence yeah. of a god, just so you know. What's that? You are in the presence of a god, just so you know that. This is this is like as holy a ground as you'll find for us. So, so if I wasn't intimidated before, I should be more so now. Well, I would suggest being slightly nervous, <laughs> but intimidated, no. But slightly nervous, and just be respectful, and you'll 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 be fine. But she wants audience with you, but. She wants you clean and healthy. That's why I healed you. She wants she wants audience with you, but she needs you healthy. No oh, shit. Yeah. You'll be okay, my friend. I promise. If you All right. well I trust you. Okay. Trust me then. Just trust me. Okay, what are you gonna do? I'll take him to Okay, so you're gonna please. feast and eat. And then take Zildjian. Him. And uh, what is he what are you taking him with? How are you preparing him? What does he have with him? Uh, what does he have? Get him some. I think the only need thing he needs is a loincloth. <laughs> no, he needs some fine. He needs to look good. He needs to look presentable. Okay. Okay. Like you know what I mean? Like a nice outfit on, best clothing. I mean, so got... Linen, white linens will be left. Okay. Then get him cleaned up. And okay. Nice and they're putting you in, in and... a white tunic. Oh my God. And Boondar will then take you to the chambers of the Lady of the Snow Mist. Do you have some of that uh, orcish stuff? You know, the orcs where they mix their spit and their cum and their <laughs> shit. The fun juice. Yeah, <laughs> fun juice. <laughs> uh, no, but you, you know what? We will we're 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 tell you that uh, you can move. Thank you, lady. Okay, Angmundar will get will come back to uh to oh, our to our <laughs> and uh, she will send um, a large volume of ice wine uh, for you. Nice. Okay. That night, Angmundar will drink himself into a stupor, and will end up pass passing out in the room. Zildjian, when you go into the room, she will take you onto onto her large bed and she will come to you 
and she will tell you to seduce her. Oh my <laughs> god. Drugs, <laughs> Elgin. No pressure. This is it. <laughs> she will then turn, and you can tell that she is, she seems to be, things get a bit hazy. There is some type of ice mist or snow mist in the air. You can see it at times and you can smell it, but most pronounced, you can taste it in your in the back of your throat. And, and she will she she has a silver goblet that she drinks out of, and she will give one to you as well, and she will begin to talk. And uh, she will begin to show you things in reflections on the ice in the walls and around the room and in uh, the ceilings. And at various times, you can see things in the ice that you can tell are very important. And you will see glimpses of your life. And you will see glimpses of your past. And you will see glimpses that you know are of your future. And you can see things that are happening. Things of importance, things of grave, grave importance. But as these images flash, and as you can taste the snow mist, and as you drink of the of the goblet, time begins to be, become difficult to keep track of. Things become dislocated and dis and discombobulated, and you feel that you are whirling and swirling almost as if. You are outside. At times, you swear that you know exactly what it feels like to be a snowflake falling through the air, spiraling, constantly turning and spinning, and you feel so dizzy. And then you realize that the turns and spins that you are taking, you are doing with her in her bed as, as, as you enter the throes of passion. But you lose all sense of time, and you have no idea how much time passes until everything finally just slips into blackness. <clears throat> the uh, early in the morning, you will be awakened up, you will you will not see it. Uh, you're already up. Er, 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 he's he's uh, he's uh, snoring. And you will see coming walking into into the room two orcs. And they have a strange hue on their on their skin. They're only wearing loincloths. <coughs> they are they are ice orcs, and they carry a they carry a spit, and and tied onto the spit, his hands together and his feet together. <laughs> At first, you you, you know, recognize him. Then you can tell that it is that it is Azildi, <laughs> and he is covered in in uh, in uh, in frost. He's covered. Icicles hang from him. And uh, you, you, he looks as if he is frozen solid. And the orcs will lay him down in front of you, and then they will walk away. They will they will actually untie his uh, hands and feet, and he lies. Is there a bath here in this room? Yeah. The uh, there there's a there's a hot spring. I'll have the orcs put him in there. So you're gonna you're gonna call the orcs? Yeah. Okay. They will respond. They will pick him up and they will place him into the hot spring. Okay, so they will thaw out there. Okay, they will go to the hot spring and they will leave. Oh, no. Over the next, I'll see if the uh, big old uh, ice oak there can be awoken at okay. this point. Over the next several hours, slowly, the uh, color and the heat begins to return to to uh, to Azildjian, and you'll realize that he's not dead. Um, that his body metabolism is slowed, and that he, and that he is in a, in many ways he's in a form of, of uh, what is it? Cryogenic. Cryogenic. Is, 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 is yeah. Cryogenic stasis. Yeah. yeah. And he will gradually become conscious, but it'll take another several hours before he can actually speak. Wow. So it'll be about five hours. <laughs> five hours of his body temperature slowly getting warmed up. So that he's conscious again and, and able to sleep. It is a very uncomfortable, painful process uh, to to be warmed up against Zildjian. Okay, it is the morning of October the 11th. We can go into Icordia for some of that juice. 
Yeah. It's just the city's just right over there. It's just this is like the here in this city. Just walk down the Elwood city. Zildjian, as memories come flashing back from the night before in pieces, you remember one thing. You remember her talking to you and telling you that you were giving her your essence, that you were planting your seed in her, <laughs> that you were giving her child. <laughs> that by the time you were done, and in some ways you almost remember, it was almost like you could see uh, your child, uh, you could see into her stomach as if it was one of those frozen balls of ice, and you could see your seed going forward and beginning to take the form of, of an embryo. And you believe that she heard tell you that she would bear your child. Oh, and yeah. if and if it was a girl, it would become one of her daughters. It would become one of her dozen daughters that she would keep and they and and she would raise as her own until the age of fourteen, when one of them when one of the daughters would be chosen and the other daughters would be sacrificed, and that the one that was chosen she would would become her 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 receptacle, her body, so she could continue to live on. And then you remember at one point asking her, "And what if I give you a son?" She said, "Then it will die." And so that's what you remember. Right? You remember some of the things that happened last night. You were a girl. It's got like a Eight percent chance of survival. Wow. And if it's a boy, it's got zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get fourteen years. Like, you know, that's a pretty good lifespan in a lot of culture. It is. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't expect a lot more. Okay. It is the morning of October the eleventh. That last night was the first morning that you get sonic points, Eretenzer. Um, you can give yourself twelve hours of rest. And then six hours of sleep. For your sonic points, 12 hours of rest and six hours of sleep. Okay, and on the morning of October the 12th, or sorry, the, uh, the, the 11th, we'll stop the session there. Sheets for experience. Wow. How are you doing, buddy? Pass it on down, Al. I'm just coming out of cryogenic freezing. <laughs> Came out of it pretty well, I'd say. I don't know what happened to me last night. He was snapped out of it like that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think you got quite the treatment there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, guys, I gotta run off here. All right. Uh, hey, just for for your experience points, um, put uh, two thousand on two. No, actually, put one thousand on each. Thirty-two okay. and twenty. Okay. For a